Hi, I'm Mark Cox. Um, I'm an experimental archaeologist and a freelance uh, archaeological craftsman uh, based here in the southwest of England. Um, this is the site that I'm the director of, New Haven Coppice. Uh, we co founded this about four or five years ago now. It's a centre for uh, heritage crafts, uh, experimental archaeology, and traditional land management. Uh, and as you can see, we're creating a uh, early medieval Anglo-Saxon uh, farmstead uh, within seven acres of ancient woodland uh, right on the Somerset Devon border, uh, where we manage the trees, uh, manage our orchards, and manage the land using traditional methods uh, which they would have used during the period of our study. Uh, the tools and the techniques uh, we look to the archaeological evidence of our surroundings uh, for, for how we can practice these uh, crafts. My first experience of recording and documenting in open air museums came back in 2013 when I worked for Somerset County Council as their community archaeologist. My role was linked to the Avalon Marshes Landscape Partnership um, with Dr Richard Brunning as my line manager. Um, we were tasked with setting up the Avalon Marshes Centre, which was to be an archaeological park out on the Somerset Levels. Um, as part of this project, we also put together what became known as the Hands-On Heritage Volunteer Programme. And it's with these volunteers who have met every Wednesday since 2013, since their inception, um, that we hope to build the archaeological park and all of the components within that. Now, to record all this work, I set up a, a blog known as the Avalon Archaeology blog, um, which has become more of a, an archive of all the work um, that has occurred since. So if we just take a quick look at it, um, we can go back to when it was first um, set up, back in 2013. And in fact, the very first entry to this website was, in fact, when we met uh, with the Open Arc group, it's part of, uh, funded by Exarch, part of Exarch, um, in Exeter. And here you can see uh, Luke Winter, and my boss, Richard Brunning, and myself um, at the Ancient Technology Centre um, all, all those years ago. So we aimed to record as much as we could of the work that we were doing um, through photographs and videos and text um, so whether that was um, recording in our creation of uh, the prehistoric trackways from the levels, uh, here you can see uh, a reconstruction of the sweet track that we made, um, or of the many buildings that we um, eventually went on to construct, including um, a Saxon Hall uh, based on archaeology uh, found uh, in Cheddar, this is a, a palatial long haul from the Anglo-Saxon period. Um, a Roman villa, uh, again based on archaeology found in, in Somerset. Uh, an Iron Age roundhouse. Now, they've only just started building the, the reconstruction of the Iron Age roundhouse. And there's some images down the bottom here. But the site that we were working on was um, uh, previously known as the Pete Moore Centre, which closed um, about in 2009. Um, the site had a number of Iron Age roundhouse buildings um, there already, um, and as part of this uh, work, we documented the, um, the eventual collapse of the three buildings there, um, and then their degradation into the landscape. So here you can see a few images of uh, one, of the, one of the roundhouses um, which collapsed. Um, also, as part of this work, um, we looked at a lot of the kind of um, technologies, tools, uh, ancient crafts that we need to understand to um, to build these buildings and to uh, create the objects that we wanted within this museum. So, um, for example, when we were doing our, our two dugout canoes, we looked into birch bark tar as a way of sealing them. 
Um, we also went into iron smelting, bronze casting, flint napping, all of the kind of ancient technologies that um, you'd need to understand in order to, um, to be involved in a place like this. Um, so um, this website still stands and is still updated uh, regularly, um, which is why it's kind of such an incredible resource and such an incredible archive of, of the work we undertook. Um, as I said, the volunteers still meet every Wednesday, led by Dr. Richard Bonning now, um, and he updates the website whenever he can, usually at least once or twice a month. So along the, uh, the side here, you can see um, the see it going back from 2020, May to March 2020, all the way back to May 2013, with with posts on um, archaeological excavations and the reconstructive works that took place at the Avalon Marshes Centre. So, two years ago, I spent the summer working in Mid Wales at the Out of Eden Stone Age Centre. This is quite an incredible place where they're striving to create a Neolithic farmstead, working farmstead, in the mountains of central Wales. My role there was to run the volunteer group and help repair their existing building, which consisted of two small roundhouses and a larger tannery building, uh, which was basically uh, a big open sided roundhouse. Along with that, I was tasked with constructing a new timber building to house their winter fodder store for their mouflon sheep. As my role and presence there was supported by external funding, I was required to provide a detailed log of the work that was undertaken. With this in mind, throughout my time there, I meticulously wrote a diary recording each of the day's achievements. Accompanying this was a photographic and occasional video log. This elegantly showed the progress we made over the course of the summer and later when producing the funding report gave solid figures and prompts as to exactly what had occurred and when. Included in my diary was a record of man hours, tools used, materials and techniques, what worked and what didn't. This has proved invaluable to me now as an experiment as a freelance experimental archaeologist as I don't have to relearn the mistakes and can figure out roughly how long and what I need to complete similar projects. This diary approach is a great tool for me as an individual to record what I've done, providing a resume to secure future work and models to help price obscure tenders I find myself receiving. As a lazy experimental archaeologist and craftsperson, I've always struggled finding the incentive to publish the work that I do, um, particularly at my own centre, New Haven Coppice. However, the opportunity arose a few years ago to start writing for uh, this magazine, uh, Bushcraft and Survival Skills, and become its, one of its regular contributors. Um, every two months, I write an article uh, specifically on experimental archaeology and ancient crafts. This gave me um, not only the incentive to publish my work in the form of uh, pay, but it also meant that I could publicise it to a much wider audience, not just the kind of academics um, who were used to aiming our research towards. Uh, this also meant that over the years, as I started running out of stuff uh, to publish from my own uh, work thus far, I've had to uh, find more purpose for more research, looking wider afield for more work. Um, however, I'm just going to go through a few examples of the articles I've written so far and see what I've, I've um, undertaken at my centre, New Haven Coppice. The first article I wrote for Bushcraft and Survival Skills magazine was entitled The Great Felling. This documented uh, the day where we utilised Bronze Age tools to drop one of the large oak trees within our woodland. Uh, this was to a clear the site for the construction of our farmstead, um, but also to examine the wear, the heavy wear, that would take place on these tools from different parts of the Bronze Age, um, and how the handles would react to such um, heavy work. 
the following articles um, then went into a greater depth on the kind of tools that were used slightly later uh, by the Anglo-Saxon tree rites. Uh, so the axes, the augers, the draw knives, the froes, and how they're utilised uh, to process timber. Um, this was then looked at in more, more detail through a series of articles on how we convert trees to usable timber uh, through splitting with wooden wedges, splitting and cleaving, uh, and then through hewing using, uh, using axes, so how we convert the trees into beams and posts and other usable square timber. This next series uh, examined the construction of an Anglo-Saxon building. So this was one of our uh, sunken featured buildings that we have at New Haven Coppice. It was based on the archaeology that was discovered at Hinkley Point here in Somerset. It was the first article uh, examined the woodwork, the frame, how we uh, perceive the building could have looked, how it could have been built using the, the evidence that was found archaeologically, uh, and how we went about uh, creating the components of that building with the different types of uh, wood, um, joinery, uh, etc. We then went on to have a look at how the building would have been roofed, the thatching materials, the methods of thatching, and then finally looking at how the building was uh, daubed, how the walls were daubed, and looking at different examples from different open air museums from around the country, actually, and also um, from modern day cottages here in here in the southwest. Although being freelance has its issues, lack of regularity, no holiday or sick pay. It doesn't have to mean a lack of record keeping in the work that we undertake. Even just putting this presentation together has inspired me to invest more time in documenting, as I know the benefits will not only be useful for others, but useful to my own business as well. Being able to archive and record work properly, succinctly and accessible to all reduces what we as experimental archaeologists love doing, reinventing the wheel. I'm sorry not to have been able to see you all in person, but I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. See you all in Exeter next year.